everyone, Lady Steam here. This video is how to make our cool biplane coaster kit. And we'll be looking at the pieces and parts that are included in the kit, talking a little bit about how to decorate your biplane coaster, and then we'll be covering how to assemble it. All right, now let's take a look at our product a little more closely and see what it is that we're going to be building. Remember that before you start, you're going to want to make sure you have a screwdriver, some sandpaper, some glue, and whatever art decorating supplies you're going to need to decorate the pieces. This sample I left in bare wood, but you may want some other additional decoration on it. You can wood stain. There's all kinds of interesting information about that on the techniques page on our website. So I'm going to start by sliding off my sleeve on my kit. Trying to do it without breaking it. But obviously you don't have to do that. And I'm going to open the sticker on my kit. And now we'll take a look at the pieces and parts that have been included inside. There is a set of instructions here, tips and tricks and things you'll want to know, along with a list of all of the parts that are in your box. Um, you're going to have a set of gears. And we're going to open those up right away because when we talk about decorating, you'll definitely want to use that set of gears. And you'll also have a set of screws. You can leave that in the box for now. We'll use them later. And I'm going to pull this inner liner out first and then pull my whole stack out at once. You'll also find a piece of spare wood that I don't have in this sample kit that'll give you something to color on and test your pins with as you build them. Um, and that'll be a helpful piece as well. And here are my spare screws so I can get the box out of my way. So let's look at the pieces of wood in your project and how you're going to assemble them. Um, and I'm going to start from the bottom. So I'm going to flip my stack over here and we'll look at them. This is the very base. It's going to go this way. Um, and we're going to glue it to this as we do our assembly. So when you're talking about what to decorate and what to sand, you're going to want to make sure you decorate and sand the bottom piece. Everybody will turn this over to look at it. And you're going to definitely want to sand the top piece because we're going to have gears spinning on that top piece. And you will also note, you'll see the middle section of that top piece. So don't spend a lot of time decorating the outer side of that base. Just the middle section is going to be visible as you spin your gears. This outer ring, however, is called an analyst. It's called an analyst because of the gear teeth there. And that's going to be visible on the outside and a teeny tiny bit of the teeth on the inside of your coaster. What we're going to do next as we actually assemble this is we're going to put a set of gears at this level. And we'll talk a little bit about how that all gets built when we're ready to do the assembly. But you will have a set of gears on this level that you may want to decorate in a specific color. And holding this together will be what we're calling a six-legged propeller here. And that six-bladed propeller is going to sit on top like so and get attached to those gears. So that's the bottom half of your coaster. And what you can see is that you've got really two sets of propeller parts that you see. You're not going to see very much of the ones that go underneath. Then we'll put another analyst above that and a set of gears balanced on the other teeth or the other bars of our six-legged propeller, like so. And above that piece of our propeller, we're going to set another propeller going the opposite direction and letting us look, whoops, I picked the wrong one there, the opposite direction and letting us sit on top like so. Uh, so that gives us the two propellers in our biplane coaster. And you can see how visible both of those will be. Above that, we're going to set 
a ring that has some attachments that'll get attached to these holes and screwed through to those holes. Um, and finally, we have a set of top rings. This is gonna go on the top to build our base. This thin ring will get set on top of this, and this little brown thing is actually a piece of plastic, so we're gonna set it aside right now as well. And finally, this ring will go on top of your biplane coaster. So what you need to do next is you need to go in and you need to decorate and sand all the parts. Anything that's going to rub against each other, you want to make sure is carefully sanded. So you'll notice, for example, that this first set of four pieces all goes together nicely along with this one down below. So we're going to need to make sure under the top three rings here that we're ever so carefully sanding, staining, and making sure everything is perfectly smooth so that it will spin smoothly as we build our coaster. So, go away, decorate, sand, make it beautiful, and then come back and watch the rest of the video and we'll talk about how to assemble your biplane coaster. Now that you've decorated the parts and pieces, let's take a look at the screw kit and we'll walk through assembling your coaster. So I'm gonna open my screw kit here. There are lots of screws in here. Be a little bit careful. Um, these are all 440 hardware, so should you lose something, um, you can certainly get additional hardware, but let's talk about what's in our kit. First, you're gonna notice that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nuts. I also have three quarter inch screws. I have three medium length screws. These are our, and I always have to compare them to see. So see how we've got two different lengths here. I've got three five eighths inch screws and four three quarter inch screws, one seven eighth inch screw to go down the middle, four wood spacers and four feet. And we're gonna start as we build this by assembling what we call the puck. So this is gonna be our base for our piece that we're gonna put in the middle. And what we're gonna do here is we're actually gonna build three screws going down and a number of screws going up. The screws going down are gonna go in every other hole and it doesn't really matter where you start just so long as it's every other one. And we want to glue these in. I'm using super glue here. Um, this is one thing you probably do want to do with super glue. I don't know that you could get them in tight enough to stay with wood glue. Uh, you could use epoxy or something else, I suppose. And I'm just going to put those in. Put that dot of glue on top. Is going to glue that quarter inch screw in so it doesn't fall out. All of the rest of the screws that we're putting in here will actually get nuts put on top of them and they'll get attached carefully. Make sure you do this in every other one and not two next to each other. She says with experience of having actually done that in the past. So we're gonna do our three. Little pieces here. If you end up with extra glue and you don't want it to dry and shine through when you are doing it, you can use a little paper towel and wipe off that extra glue from the top. Um, you can also wipe off extra glue if it got on the bottom and onto your screws themselves. We're not going to use those threads except as a place to pivot a gear on, but you don't want to have so much glue sticking out that the gears can't sit on those that spin. So that's the first piece of our building our little puck of gears. The second piece is we're gonna take those three five eight inch screws, those are the shorter ones, and we're gonna run them the other direction. So I'm gonna screw these up through the puck facing to whatever side I decided was the pretty side that I wanted people to be able to see. And 
and they don't actually have to go all the way up this time. Um, we're going to back them out a little bit before all is said and done, but I'm screwing them all the way in here. This is the piece of this that's tricky. Don't think you're going to figure out how to do this because you won't. <laughs> and one more nice 5 8 screw goes up on this side to build the third piece of our little center puck here. And now for purposes of building this, I'm gonna take one last screw. I'm gonna take the 7 8 inch screw and I'm gonna put it facing up and I'm gonna set this sitting down on my table like so. And now we're ready to put this layer of gears in. So we're going to do gear, 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 and gear on those three screws or on those four screws that are facing up. And you'll notice I can spin and all that goes well. Now the planetary gear is the sun and the planets and this analyst that goes around the outside. But before we can put that analyst on the outside, we need to glue a layer on top of it that's going to anchor this analyst and keep it still when it's attached to our coaster. So we're going to glue these two layers like this with the pretty eared piece going above the analyst layer. So I'm going to put my glue on the analyst layer, just a thin ring all the way around. Make sure those get glued down nicely. And this is the piece you're going to be most careful of for alignment at this stage of our project. And take those two and make sure that the teeth and the ring on top of it get lined up perfectly. And then push down. If you're using super glue, that pushing down locks the super glue into place. Until you do, you probably have a little bit of time to move things around. If you get extra glue on the outside, you can wipe it off, but we're going to glue those two layers together like so. And once those have dried a little bit, I can set my analyst nicely on top of my gears. Centered oh so perfectly. And now you'll notice that I can spin. You don't want to do this because you don't want to lose that center screw, but you'll notice I can spin the top layer above the bottom layer without a problem. So now we're ready for one more step. Now we want to put this propeller on top, but to do that we need a little bit of spacers. So I'm going to take these little spacer pieces and I'm going to drop them in here just like so on top. And this propeller is going to go over that middle screw and it's gonna get put over all of these other screws. Now here's the part that's tricky. I don't want to lose that center screw because I don't want anything to disconnect on me. So I'm just gonna start this real quick so that that center screw doesn't fall out accidentally and I wouldn't wanna lose that center spacer. And then I can flip this over and what we're trying to do is squeeze these down. And if you push, they'll squeeze a little bit, um, but not completely. So I'm gonna go from the bottom like so, and I'm gonna tighten these screws in further and tighten this all together. So I'm just flipping it over and from the bottom, tightening these screws all the way in to that top layer. And making sure I keep the gears and the analysts and the teeth all lined up as I do that. If you keep it this direction, 
gravity will help you with doing that. Now, I don't want you to think that we're done with this step yet. Um, so I'm going to tighten this down a little bit more, but not very much. Because I have a problem, I need to be able to spin this center set of gears. So the trick is now that we're going to back those screws out a little bit. We've now got them all the way in. We've got support. And now I'm going to back them out a little bit. And so I'm just going to twist this here, give myself a little more room. between the two layers. And now you'll see that I can start to spin this middle piece a little bit. Um, and the mission here is loose, 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 loose. So if that's not loose enough, then you wanna back it out a little more. And I really don't wanna unscrew it at the bottom. I really wanna unscrew it between. So I'm gonna push, put my finger here and push up a little bit. Um, just to make sure what I'm doing is unscrewing there and not unscrewing at the bottom. So I'm going to do one more little twist on all three sides. Make sure that's all there. And see how nice and loose this is? You want this to be something that you can spin probably with one finger. And you should still have about yay much screw head coming through. Make sure this is loose. I can't use that word enough times in this discussion. And again, this screw is just here to hold my piece together. And so I don't lose the little spacer and that middle tooth because they aren't really attached to anything. Once I've done that, I'm ready and I'm sure and I'm happy with how loose this is. I'm ready to fasten these outside three pieces in place, these outside three screws in place, and I'm going to do that by putting a dot of glue on each of them and putting a nut on top. Now, notice I'm not tightening it down. It's typically, depending on how you've got your spacing, should be just about flush with the top of the screw head when you put the nut on it. Let's see, that one's a little bit in even. Now, you want to make sure you don't use very much super glue if you're doing this. We use a gel super glue so it doesn't go all the way through. Um, if it looks like there's any possibility of this gluing things together, then just sit here for a couple minutes and spin, spin, spin your piece to make sure it continues spinning and continues staying nice and loose. Once you're happy with that, we're going to set it aside, and now we're going to build the first two pieces of our base. So what we want to do is we want to glue these two layers together. But we, again, we need to make sure the screws line up properly. So I'm going to take these four screws now. Remember, the base is going to go... Nope, this piece is going to go the pretty side up. So I'm going to take these four screws... And I'm going to put them from the bottom side, from the ugly side of the bottom, facing up. Um, the way I flip them over typically is I grab all four of them and flip them over. So now my bottom is sitting like this, and I'm ready to sit this piece on top. So I'm going to take and put some glue on the big analyst what we call this and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna put it over my four screws and make sure the outside edge is lined up and the screw holes are all lined up and make sure my bottom of my coaster is now held together and those two layers are set set there make sure you wait to pick it up until you're sure the glue is dried enough it's not going to slip any and then you can lift the base up off those four screws and put them aside we'll need them in another minute okay now if you come back to your puck 
This is the top layer of gears. We're now ready to put the bottom layer of gears in. So we're going to flip it over carefully. And we have to do something with this screw because I can't put a big gear on that center screw, can I? So instead, I'm going to put my finger here to hold that screw in so it doesn't fall out on me. And I'm going to ever so carefully pull that screw straight down, flip it over, and put it straight back in. If you don't do that and you lose the middle gear or the middle spacer, you can get them back in. But again, it's a bit of a challenge. And now before I assemble it, I'm going to put a finger on that middle screw and I'm going to flip this back over. And now you'll notice that I have four screw heads showing. So these are upside down now. So I'm going to put my new four gears on the bottom, upside down. And I'm going to hold this together. And what we're ready to do is put the bottom on this and we're going to take those gears and again they're going to go into the teeth in our analyst. This is a little bit tricky too. I'm just going to turn my base over, set it on top, and then I'm going to shake, shake, shake a little bit to make sure that those gear teeth line up. And now my top, my bottom layer of gears will spin easily. And I'm ready at this point to anchor that center screw with a little bit of glue. This is the hardest one because if this gets too tight, your entire piece is going to be too tight. So I'm going to put a dot of glue on it, but I am not going to tighten this screw down at all. In fact, all I'm going to do is put it on two or three twists. Do not tighten it. Make sure you've got air gap between the bottom of your glued piece and the top of the wood. Um, you don't have to tighten that in yet if you don't want to. You definitely want to put the nut on a little ways, but once you do that, if you don't glue it in, you want to be a little careful because if you um, don't glue it in, it can tighten itself up. These nuts have a tendency as you spin them to tighten themselves up. So now we're ready for the next piece, which is these last four screws. And I'm gonna take those last four screws that we used and I'm gonna put them through the holes here like so. And again, our secret on this, remember, is loose, loose, loose. So I'm gonna put these four things through and I'm gonna twist just the top layer. And see how twisting just that top propeller around the teeth is moving the top bar and the bottom analyst and the ring where we've got the, the ring where we've got those bottom gears attached. And those are the only two things that are spinning are the two propeller pieces. The rest of it is still. And see how easy that is to spin. It's, Hopefully you've managed that. If not, you can still back out of things and loosen up those center screws there, loosen, loosen up the ones on your uh, middle puck pieces a little bit if you need to. And now we're ready to put these four screw gears on, these four nuts on. And the secret here again is loose, loose, loose. Um, and you can do this one at a time if you want to. Um, I've got all four in a decent position. And again, don't tighten them down at all. You're just going to put them through here. All they're doing is holding the piece together. So just barely start them. Give them a couple of turns. Make sure you've given yourself airspace between them as you put the nuts on. And as always, test, 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 and test some more. We have helped lots and lots of people build these in workshops, and everybody wants to tighten up their nuts. Okay, I'm ready to put on the last two. Again, I've tested to make sure everything is loose. Once I get these last two nuts in place, I can test it one more time. And then all that's left is putting the bottom and the top together and making it turn into a coaster. Okay. 
my pieces are on, my toy itself is built. So now I'm ready for the pretty parts. We're gonna start with the bottom. And what I'm gonna do here, once you're sure that glue is dried, those screws are loose enough, then nothing is gonna be a problem. I'm gonna put glue on the bottom. Make sure you've put glue on that screw head so that that doesn't fall off or tighten up. And I'm just gonna set my bottom on here. It's mostly self-centering because it's going around those nuts. And we've given you four sticky feet. Uh, they stay much better if you put a drop of super glue on them. We initially tested them without any super glue and they have a tendency to come off. And since we know you want permanent feet on this coaster, we're gonna put those feet on it. And I was messy and got extra super glue flying around, so I'm gonna wipe off my extra super glue. Flip this over. Um, if it's tight, don't freak out at this point. Um, it will loosen up over time. Now that the bottom is on and your toy is spinning loosely, and again, if it's not spinning loosely, don't completely freak out. You do have, it will get looser over time. The nice thing about wood is that it slowly sands itself as you use it. So if it's not as loose as you want it to be, don't panic, it will get there. Uh, we're ready to put on our top three layers. And the first of the layers that we're gonna put on is this big, thick ring. Um, and that's gonna give us the support for our coaster top. So all I need to do here is put a layer of glue on top of my biplane. and to set this on top like so. Push down and make sure that gets ready to go. Make sure that's nice and solid. Notice how much easier it is to spin once you get to this stage um, because you've got something to hold on to. And now we're gonna put this ring on. This thin ring is a little bit delicate and it can be deformed. So you definitely don't want to do that. Um, as always, I'm gonna put my glue on the smaller of the pieces. So in this case, it's my thin ring. So I'm just gonna put a ring of glue around here, all the way around to glue this down. And then I'm gonna set this thin ring on. Again, making sure it's lined up just to make it look pretty. And glue that down like so. And now that's gonna sit there. Now we wanna make sure that this dries completely before you move on to the next step, that there isn't any super glue um, going on here still because super glue is the enemy of acrylic. So make sure your fingers are dry and you don't have any wet super glue on your fingers um, and make sure that the glue on the inside of this ring is dry as well. Sometimes we leave them to sit overnight. And now I'm going to take my piece of acrylic. It's got a paper covering on both sides. And I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna take the side that I wanna have be the bottom of my acrylic, and I'm gonna pull it all the way off, and then I'm gonna stick it back down just so that it's really easy to pull off when I'm ready to use it. And then I'm gonna flip this over, and on the top side of my acrylic, I'm gonna make myself a little handle. Just a little bundle of paper and a handle that I can use to handle the acrylic when I'm ready to put it into my piece. And obviously this one is going to be tricky and not want to form the handle properly for me. So if you can ever so carefully just lift up all the way around the outer edge, it's the easiest way 
to build this little wad of paper in the middle. So now I can set it down where it's safe. And I can come over to my coaster itself. Make sure you don't have any extra dust in your coaster. Hopefully no dust in the air around your lovely acrylic. And I'm gonna put a ring of glue all the way around the outside here. Now, if you have accidentally squeezed a little bit and deformed your circle and it's not perfectly round, don't be paranoid. It will likely still fit fine. Um, and now I'm ready to put the acrylic in. And the reason I did it in that order is so I didn't get any super glue accidentally on my acrylic. So I can pull off the bottom, make sure it doesn't have any dust on it and immediately set it in my circle. And now, the last piece of our build, putting the top ring on, like so, and pushing down on it, and I'm pulling off that little handle of the acrylic. Again, if you've got extra glue around the outside of any of this, you can wipe it off with a paper towel. And you should have a beautiful aviator biplane coaster.